Greetings, everyone. My name is Etherville, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Mega Man Maker. During the last part, I covered four Virus Med levels. So in this part, I'll be covering at least five or six more Virus Med levels, starting up with this one. Purple Fortress by Magmax, with 12 plays and a score of 3. As always, if you want one of her levels to be featured in a future part like this one, please leave both the level name and level ID either in the comment section below or direct message me on Twitter. Also as always, the full disclaimer of this entire LP series is linked in the description below. Also in the description are the timestamps for all the levels that I cover in these parts. So if you want to check if her level is covered, expand the description. I see what the stage is going for. First, the introductory segment using the NATO. Now we have the regular Spring Fortress gimmick of fighting several enemies in a row. Each room filled with a different enemy type. I very likely want to refill my NATO energy. Good checkpoint placement. Gonna do a safety reset just in case. Well, this is a neat vertical segment. Some despawning issues, but otherwise it worked. And to be fair, that second section with the required usage of the NATO, that wasn't too bad. That was easier than the first section. I don't have access to sliding here, so no slide jumping. No freezing weapons either. Okay, now I do have access to a freezing weapon. Yet I do it in the wrong order. Wait a second. Let's get used to the pattern first before moving right. So I don't get accidentally insta-gibbed. That happened way too many times in the previous episode's final level covered. And I do like the combination of the foreground and background assets. They all contribute to the consistent purple color scheme. Bit of a cinematic segment over there. Just hold right to win. Didn't expect those big fish enemies there. Oh, that's how you do it. 
There's the slide button not working, or rather the dash button. That's an ominous face. If this was a level made by the patio, I'd be especially worried. Neat, we fight Charge Man using the Trouble Boost. Not the best weapon to fight him with, especially because in order to get the best effect of the Trouble Boost, you need to be right face first up into Charge Man so he takes triple the damage. Ah, uh, this was a neat little level. Out of all the Spring Fortress-like levels I played by Magmax, this is one of my favorite ones. It was pleasant. Second level on the lineup is Double Jump Frenzy B3 by Jedox74, with 14 plays and a score of 2. So number 3 in the mini-series of the base challenge levels by Jedox74, I'll be completing the fourth and final one in this part right after this one. This time we have a rather golden color scheme. I do like how, in contrast with the Mega Man miniseries of challenges, all of the levels in the base miniseries have their own distinct color schemes, so they are more memorable. We even have yellow slash orange gimmicks with the Kazakh platforms. I'm just waiting for the introduction of the Force Beams. They have been present in all of the stages so far. This segment is here to just get your feet wet. Some I failed at because I didn't pay enough attention to what was going on. So, that Kha'Zix platform despawned. Let's try speedrunning it this time. This in the previous level had good checkpoint placement. Now introducing count bombs. Over a better spike, so it's assumed you understand how they work. My biggest question is where are the force beams? Does this stage lack force beams? In that case, it increases the variety and makes the level stand out more. Yep, this stage did not have any force beams. And that was a short recombination of the gimmicks, those being the count bombs and the Kha'Zix platforms. Would have liked if that segment extended further, like decreased the length of the first section because it was getting a bit repetitive and added to the final section because that needs to be longer. It ended too abruptly. Third level on the lineup is Double Jump Frenzy B4, also by Jadox74. 9 plays and a score of 0. Let's see how this concludes this mini series. Will it include all the gimmicks we've seen so far in this mini series? We have a more steel background, steel and blue. We have the Sparkman platforms, Count Bombs, Kha'Zix platforms, the Fire Bar, and Drop platforms. The Conveyor Belts, Crushers, Gyres, Spikes, and Gyro platforms. So, 9 gimmicks, or 10 of them. Yep, this is combining all of them.
It's assumed that you already understand how these all work from the previous three levels in the series, and I'm okay with that. You should play all these levels in order, after all. I wonder why there are Kha'Zix platforms just below the Sparkman platforms. Maybe as a fallback just in case if you fail to jump? Suddenly the stage is lagging. Not sure why, but it does make this segment a bit easier. Welp, I'm almost dead. Should have been a bit more patient with some of these jumps. It's alright, there is a checkpoint at the beginning of this section. In fact, every section of this stage starts with a checkpoint, so that's good design. Sadly, the stage is still lagging, so it isn't a memory issue. It has to do with the number of objects on screen. Each section focuses on a different combination of gimmicks that we've seen before. This time, jar blocks and spikes. I'm thankful that Genox 94 gave us access to the Skull Bear to make it a bit easier. I remember this section from level 2, where you need to outrun the Gyres so they don't despawn our Skull Barrier. Although it's a lot easier here, because in the previous level that I played through that had this, they were running across conveyor belts. Not sure what happened there. Out of the four stages in this miniseries, this is easily my favorite one. It has the most interesting usage of these gimmicks so far. The difficulty curve is also pretty spot on. I do like how each section focuses on a separate set of gimmicks that we've seen before, instead of the level designer just piling on all of the gimmicks into one section. Overall, I say that the base miniseries of challenge levels are better than the Mega Man series of challenge levels. So close. I was mashing the Skull Bear generation button, but it didn't work for whatever reason.
Thank you for the fallback in case you run out of skull bear energy. I have one complaint about the stage. At the beginning part of the section, there's no way to restock on your skull bear energy. So, if you run out of it, you're hosed and you're forced to restart the stage from the beginning. You should put a large weapon respawner there, so players can restock on their weapon energy. Overall, a superior series of mini challenge stages. I'd love to see how the Proto Man series compares with this one. Fourth level on the lineup is Burst Man Stage Mega Man 7 by Retro Gamer Aaron, with 41 plays and a score of 13. A bit of history. I previously played a Burst Man Stage recreation by this level designer several months back, back when the latest version of this engine was 1.2 or 1.3, meaning that they had to make do with the limited assets available in the engine. They didn't have access to any Mega Man 7 assets. So let's see how this improved version works out. Considering that we have a bunch of the Mega Man 7 assets available following the version 1.4 update. So far it feels very faithful to the original level design. Same placement of the tank. Same placement of the tri propeller enemy as well as the gabiole, or spine, I mean. And now, this section is a bit different. We didn't have the lyrics in the original level, but we did have the fish enemies. We also had enemies in bubbles. But the main gimmick of the stage was that the water kept rising up and down. Sadly, that cannot be replicated here. We don't have the dive mats either. The ones that would swim upwards when we got near them. Here it faced the Crabbot mini-boss, the giant lobster or crab. Instead, we fight a hot dog. I feel that the squid on mini-boss would be a bit better. Once you defeat the mini-boss, suddenly the current starts running and pushing you upwards automatically. As we can't have an automatic current pushing us upwards, we instead have the Cossack platforms, meaning that it is possible to skip the mini-boss battle entirely. Another place where the water would rise and fall. Vertical segment here using the Yoko blocks. Unlike in Mega Man 7, you cannot stun the gabules here. The third and final rising and falling segment of the stage, just before just before the boss fight against Burst Man. Of course, now it's impossible to get that M tank without using the rush coil. Before it was possible when the water was rising and falling. Possible without using the rush coil, that is. And this section used to be a lot tougher, because it was a lot more easy to embed yourself in the ceiling spikes. There we have it, that's the end of Burst Man's stage recreation. Compare it with the original recreation that Retro Gamer Aaron did several months ago, this feels more authentic. Most of the level design has been preserved, in fact the majority of it has been, and the only replacements have been with the enemy placements, the enemies, and the omission of the rising and falling water gimmick, as well as the mini boss battle and what happens afterwards. Aaron did the best they could with the limited assets they have in this engine. We have the same boss arena that Burst Man had.
Overall, a wonderful level. Fifth level on the lineup is True All by Wardonis, with 24 plays and a score of 3. And if it's as long as the previous stage, Branching Paths, also by Wardonis, this will be the final level I'll cover in the part. It seems that this stage is also going to be at least 60 to 70 screens long. So probably this is going to be the last level I'll cover in this part. But we'll see. It all depends on how difficult it is, and how frequent the checkpoint placement is. Well, this is another stage with branching paths. In fact, this stage looks like it's going to be branching paths part 2. So each and every one of these mini-segments will have their own set of challenges. Not to mention, depending on what order you go through, some of them will be made easier because you can access certain shortcuts, as you saw before. For instance, if I had access to the Crash Bomb, I could have destroyed those blocks and climbed up the ladder. Welp, somehow I avoided taking damage even though there are three hazards trying to harm me there. Welp, somehow I dodged those three hazards without dying. Let's get the Star Crash next. That was a Stark introduction. If I just held left or right on the controller, I would have instantaneously died. If anything, looking at this segment, you would think that you gain access to the Skull Bearer here. Not the Star Crash. At least the way this challenge is set up. As I have access to the atomic fire, I can make this section a lot easier.
Already I'm liking this stage a lot more than branching paths. This stage does not have an enemy spam problem. It has the right number of enemies. All these stages also have a better difficulty curve, or rather, all these sections. They feel like they have the same difficulty curve, or are roughly the same in terms of difficulty. Whereas in Branching Paths, two of the challenges were more difficult than two of the other ones. Similar to branching paths, every section has a checkpoint at the beginning, the middle, and the end. So it really feels like this stage is a combination of five smaller traditional levels. That would have been somewhat of a challenge had I not exploited the shortcut. Um, somehow I didn't hit the checkpoint there. Strange. Let's try doing that block train segment again properly this time. Although I make it a lot easier by using the Star Crash. Once again, shortcuts. Some more explicit than others. Explicit meaning those blocked by the weapon blocks. Organic meaning those that are blocked by the weapon's capabilities. Should I go down over there? Nah, I won't risk it. I want to see what's over here first. I hope this is worth it. It is. In fact, we're forced to go through that segment.
Ah, huh, that's some odd tiling issues here. It seems that we only have the left half of the block. There's the ring boomerang and our fourth and final key. Oh, the reason why the flag doesn't reset was because this stage was made before version 1.4 hit the servers. Hitting one flag which resets the rest of the flags, that feature was only added to levels made following version 1.4 hitting the servers. Now that makes sense. Time to finish up this stage, do a quick reset, and go through the final gauntlet. I want to repeatedly stress that this stage is superior to branching paths. This addresses almost all my criticisms of that level. Each of the mini sections is balanced and roughly the same in terms of difficulty, unlike before, and there's a lot less enemy spam. Every section now has an appropriate number of enemies. Not to mention the introductory screen or the hub world, it's a lot more compressed. No more having to fall through a lot of the world in order to get to the end of the stage. What I'd love to have more is a large life pickup. An E-Tank would be handy as well. Serious time. That's why I'm being silent. Suddenly we have a difficulty spike, but it makes sense because that's the last part of the stage. Stuttering, rearing its ugly head here.
That mini boss could have been worse. It could have been a hot dog or a power muscler. I think we're in the home stretch. We're escaping from this facility. Time to face Bomb Man. So that's the end of True All, aka Branching Paths Part 2. A superior version of Branching Paths that is, and a lot more fun. Difficulty curve is better, it's balanced between each of the pathways, and the final part of the stage definitely feels harder than the first part. Nice escalation of challenges and recombination of gimmicks near the end. And I do like how every section has several points where, if you have the proper special weapon, you'll be able to unlock shortcuts which make that pathway a bit easier. So that adds to the replayability. This gets a 7 out of 10. Good work, Rodonis. You were able to address the issues I outlined in Branching Paths. Then again, this level was already submitted, so they already understood what the problems were based off of other suggestions, so they improved it already. It'll be interesting to see how their future levels improve upon the design philosophies here. So overall, out of the five levels I covered in this part, my favorite level would definitely be Double Jump Frenzy B4, with an honorable mention going to Burst Man Stage Mega Man 7. So in the next part, I'll be covering several more of your submitted levels. Well then, thanks for watching and have a nice day. Toodles!